Hey everybody, welcome to Painting Big. My name is Anne and we have just started this new series on miniature painting fundamentals. So today we're going to cover washes. Uh, what kind of brush should you use? How should you apply it? And what are some of the pitfalls and tips that we can give you? All right, let's get to it. Here we are, we're gonna use a Rogue today from Reaper and I have pre-base coated him in a few different colors so you guys can see how this one wash goes over everything. Now first I wanna talk about the brush that you're gonna use for your wash. Washes are a fast form of shading if you don't know that you're using a very darker thinned paint to add shadows, natural shadows, a bit of lining, a bit of definition to your otherwise flat colors. It's very fast. It can be a bit quick and dirty, but it does get the job done, especially for gaming figures. So the correct brush is big and soft. You don't want it too large because if you want to be precise at all, say I don't want to cover the hands or uh, some other parts of this figure, I do want a brush where I can guide it a bit, but I also want a brush that's big enough to cover this surface pretty fast. You don't want to be sitting around and dabbing at your wash and slowly like covering the surface with just a little bit of paint at a time. You want to load up and hit this thing with a ton of fluid and let it pool and hopefully not run all over. But sometimes that's just what washes do. They're crazy. So what I'm using is a sable brush. And the reason this is about a $5 brush actually uh, bought online. So Windsor Newton, uh, any watercolor sable will probably work. The professional just means it was a little more expensive and maybe a little nicer than a student brand. Uh, which means it, it holds a decent tip, but we're not worried about the tip today. What it will let us do is, is guide the paint a little bit though. And the softness of the bristles is important because if you use a, like a plastic bristle or a stiffer bristle, you do risk getting a few more bubbles. Bubbles in your wash are not a deal breaker. You just have to blow on them a bit and they usually pop right away, but it's annoying and it stops you. And so anything that gets in the way of painting, my philosophy is let's just avoid it if we can find a way to do so. So now let's talk about the correct load. I've mixed up my wash. I'm using Reaper Master Series Paint Brown Liner, which is 9064. And in our next video for next month, I am going to actually talk about how to build your own wash with any Master Series color, period. Like we'll go into that. But for now, we're just using Brown Liner and we're gonna load up our brush. You want tons of paint here or as appropriate to the size of the brush. That is seriously what you want it to look like. This is the time in mini painting where you honestly just want a lot of paint. Too little, again, can cause bubbles or it can cause brush strokes. So do load up. Your correct application is gonna be fast and loose. And you do wanna go usually from either left to right or top to bottom. Here, I think I'm probably gonna do both. I'm gonna start over here, I'm gonna move across and then I'm gonna bring it all down. And as you go, you're gonna spread this paint out. And if it ever gets too thin where you're seeing brush strokes, then we're gonna go and we're gonna grab some extra wash. We may be able to cover this whole model with this big brushful and we'll find out. Essentially, more is better with a wash. You don't go too timid with it or you probably won't get as good of a result. That's the only time really you can say that in miniature painting. Once you have your one coat down, don't retouch. Wait until it dries, unless it's really still really, really wet and you think you can just dab it in and have it all flow together. Otherwise, you're gonna leave brush marks, maybe even blobs, it's bad. And then finally, once you have it all on the surface, wicking it off with like, if you rinse out your brush fast, kind of dry it off a little bit on a paper towel and then just bring your brush back. With a damper brush, you're gonna wick off excess wash and that's fine. Try to wick it off around the edges or the base of the feet as the wash will be running down the figure because yay, gravity. All right, let's get to it. I'm gonna start on the one side. I'm actually gonna start way back here, go around. You can see how the wash flows into the areas. See how I'm kind of guiding it and dabbing it, but I really am globbing it on. Yeah, I need to reload. Here we are again. You can see it just puddling and flowing, but that's good. That's what you want a wash to do. I'm gonna go over this whole thing. You can see that I did paint some things silver and gold as well. One thing you'll also notice is that the wash is gonna show up more on lighter colors. So if you're using a darker wash and you put it, if you really want it to show up, use it over lighter colors. So you can see these lines, how everything is getting picked out, right? Really crisp. But then when we get to these darker boots, we don't see it as much. So that can work for you. If it's not as apparent, it can look like a more subtle shading and not as stark, right? This can just add a nice richness and shadow to the boots. 
But the rest of this, it is pretty sharp. It's more like lining, right? You're actually putting like little thin dark lines like a cartoon character almost around the figure's details, which is really nice. And it's much faster than doing it with actual lining, which is another technique we're gonna co cover in the coming months. So now that he's all covered, I look back at it and I say, okay, what isn't working? We've got a really deep bubble here and you gotta do this pretty fast, like I said, before it all starts to dry. And you don't wanna take all of this out but, you know, if you can, remove any huge puddles that are kind of bugging you. And if you can, like, wick them off at, toward the edges of things. Like, when I was wicking that off, I was wicking it toward the edge of the cloth here. There's a big puddle back here. So if I want that, let me rinse out my brush, dry it off really quick or squeeze it out, and just kind of pull some of that extra water off of this. It'll just dry with a big dark shadow that you'll have to paint over, which you may not mind. And if not, then just let it go. But this actually looks great. Now remember that paint washes will dry lighter than they look when wet. So you won't really know until it's done and dry as far as how your paint scheme is really going to look after that wash is dried. And this is one reason to go a bit darker than you might otherwise. I chose brown liner, which is almost black. It's a very, very dark brown. But as it dries, it's not gonna look nearly as stark as it looks right now. And it's not gonna color the surfaces nearly as much either. You can see that it did discolor the surfaces slightly, and that's kind of a downside of washes, is that sometimes they cost you more time if you're going back and cleaning up and bringing colors back up to where you originally wanted them. Then a wash can cost you time. But if you're just looking to get quick shading and outlining on a gaming piece so that you can put it on the table, washes are like great. Washes are God at that point. Just go for it. Okay, I have one final tip for you, and that is that after you're done using washes, do clean your brush. Whether that's just a really, really thorough rinsing, or if you're gonna use some pink brush soap, something like that. You can even use like shampoo and then use conditioner on your brush to keep it all nice and soft. Uh, this is a thing, trust me, it's weird, but it's true. <laughs> At any rate, rinsing out your brush is a good idea because since you're using this really thin paint, what's happening is capillary action. And you can even see some dark streaks here in my brush. So what happens is that the paint gets uh, sucked up toward the ferrule, that's this metal part, and it gets sucked right in there where it sits with all of the hairs that are kind of bound together in the ferrule. And it dries in there. And as it does that, it forces your brush hairs apart until you get the poof effect. <laughs> where your brush, you can see how dark, see how dark that is at the base. There's a lot of paint trapped in this ferrule. This is my dry brushing brush for terrain. So I don't mind so much, but there will come a point where I do have to clean it. All right, everybody. I think that's all we've got for washes. Like I said, future videos, I am going to tackle how to make your own wash out of any Master Series paint, kind of how to tune it, what product to use, and how to get a good result doing that, all right? I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, be aware that I stream on Twitch on Saturdays at 3.30 USA Central Time, twitch.tv slash paintingbig. I also do a Patreon at patreon.com slash paintingbig, where I have three years worth of tutorials at all levels of painting. And you can also find me on Instagram at Painting Big. So give us a follow if you really enjoyed this video. I hope you stick around and I hope this is useful to you. Thank you so much. This is Anne signing off.